you're watching CCS, Clarksville Community Network. Produced by Goodwin Productions. Powered by CDE Lightband. My name is Elizabeth Adamski. I am a military veteran and I came to Clarksville about almost 20 years ago. So I stayed, made it my home. I graduated with a social work degree, but my love for art and the community and culture is kind of what I do now. When I needed uh, an outlet, I found it in art, and that's how I started. When I first started painting, I used pencil and acrylic. And now I transition into, I guess my daughter says I'm a contemporary artist, and I like to use a lot of recycled material and create different pieces. Recycled materials, anything we use, like old t-shirts, they're not good enough to be donated, so instead of throwing it out, help the environment and you reuse it and make it new. And so I use that instead of, you know, buying paint. So I use my colors from the, the pieces of cloth. My influences come from uh, working in the community and working with different cultures. I think everybody's an artist in their own way. I believe that art is something that is important. I think it helps with the economy, it helps with the environment, you know, to be able to reuse things that you have and not so be um, materialistic. I think when I really got serious was when I got divorced. That was my uh, therapy. I started out just uh, needed an outlet to sort of get through that emotional stay in my life. And so I started just kind of uh, doing art. If you see my earliest pieces are very different, very abstract. And then I uh, started having fun with it. So some pieces I've created in a week and some in like three days. You can't give an artist a blank slate because you got to have something on there, right? My process is you want to start with any kind of molding you have and just while you're working on the rest of the painting, uh, the flowers are being, you know, are drying. So I'm using the paper pub, which is, uh, you know, recycled paper. I make it with a blender and uh, you can do it with boiling a pot with hot water and create the, the mask, but you can also use other things, you know, clay or any kind of paper mache or anything like that you can use to create your forms, your flowers, your different things. You have to make sure that the flower doesn't have a lot of water because then it takes a lot longer and it'll penetrate through your canvas. Make sure that you squeeze the water out so it can form. I put a little bit of the glue and also on the base where you're gonna put the, the flower and you mold it into the shape that you want it. And the reason we do that first, it takes almost 24 hours for the flowers to completely dry. And then what I'm doing is I'm selecting what pieces or what material is going to go where to create my image. And then I kind of play with it and see if, you know, if it looks appealing to the eye. And so this is kind of what I have. And then I take it off and start putting it together. So you see that I'm covering the details that I did before, but I know they're there, so once I build the material, I'll bring it back with another form. A lot of people like it because of the, the details, the different pieces to put it together. You know when you go to the science museum and you get to touch other stuff? That's kind of what I like, and so I let people touch it, touch the texture because I was one of those kids in the museum. I had to touch everything. I think that's where I get that from.
Clarksville is a great city. I love my city. My daughter was born here. Uh, I, I love the between rural and city like, so we still a little bit of country, not quite a big city, uh, even though we seem to be getting there. Not as fast, I hope, but I love the home feel of the city. I am originally, uh, I was born in the Dominican Republic, but I got family in both Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. I was adopted out of my family. I was, my father died before I was born. So I, I was sent here to live with uh, guardians of, you know, extended family. I was chosen. I was given an opportunity that they didn't have, so uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. When I was about maybe four, they put me in a school, in a classroom with, I was the only Spanish speaking, you know, little girl. And so there was not too many of us. I had to learn English. I will be what they call second generation immigrant. So you have the first generation immigrant, they don't speak English at all. And then you have the second generation children, they will become bilingual because they're forced to, because of the environment. They have to become the translator for the parents. I'm always proud to say that I started learning English with Sesame Street. <laughs> but now it's pretty common to have a lot of children that are non-English speakers in classes, yeah. We're a very diverse community. We got people from everywhere. And that's one of the things I love about this city. I've been working in the community for almost maybe 15 years now. It's a very giving community and we have awesome organizations in town. But I found that uh, we needed someone to represent my sector of the community, the Hispanic community. So we got together with some friends and in 2017 when a, um, the Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico, we got more involved and then so we decided to come up with CHAF, which means the Clarksville Hispanic American Family Foundation. So the Hispanic Culture Center out of Boston P, uh, we partners with them. Last year we did our first um, community art expo and we invited like different um, Hispanic artists in the community. My whole uh, intent is to help them get scholarship for the students. My pieces would be for sale and the proceeds would go to the Austin P University Culture Center. I am trying to create some more of a cultural pieces for the Hispanic Heritage Month in October. In our organization, we have, you know, the different cultures. So when we talk to people, we, we all speak Spanish among ourselves to kind of maintain it. That's our way of maintaining the language. It's, it's nice to be able to communicate because that's our bond. Even though culturally, when we might have different traditions, you know, the language kind of is what binds us. When I was 18, I was Army, Active Army Reserve, IRR. I kind of stayed connected throughout my whole 24 years. I was uh, stationed in several places and ended up on Fort Campbell. My English was very broken, and so um, most foreigners don't understand the slang. So there was a lot of things that I did not understand, right? And one example was one of the drill sergeants said something like, who do you think you are? And I said, oh, I'm Private Valdez. And he, he was kind of correcting me, but I didn't understand slime very well. And then um, they wanted me to shine my, my boots, so they put me in front of the first sergeant, and he said, you speak to her. And uh, he said, uh, don't you know how to spit shine your boots? And I said, you mean like spit? And he said, no, elbow grease. And I said, but I don't have any. And so he looked at the other man, he said, you see what I mean? She don't understand what I'm talking to. And I said, where do you buy that? And he said, no, you gotta do this. <laughs> 
they'll punish me and say, well, you gotta go do some mountain climbing. Actually, I thought we were gonna go mountain climbing. And I thought I was fun, we're gonna go mountain climbing. The guy said, no, we're punished. <laughs> we gotta do exercise because I was ready to go to the mountain. So anyway, that was my experience and basic, it was pretty funny. When you're young, you know, you learn a process. I think a lot of the military, the way they train you is to learn your job. You don't think about the danger of it. You don't think about what if, you know, you just do your job. And if you follow the procedure, you're fine. You don't have time for, for thinking those thoughts, right? And so afterwards, you might think like, wow, you know, <laughs> that was terrible, you know, but when you're doing, your job or you, you know, whatever activities that they have you doing, you don't think about it. As you can see, I love colors. You know, I love all kind of different kind of colors. So this one, my medium was acrylic. And I started out with just doing uh, squares. And then after that, I used the easel part to kind of spread out the colors to create this. And the inspiration for this was, this is my, one of my first painting when I was doing my, what you call, art therapy for myself uh, after divorce. So you can see the emotion of, you know, that was going through this painting. So that's why I, I kind of like this one. Not everybody would understand what I do or my art form. Art is very individual and it might send a message to an individual, it might not, you know. So it, it's okay because that's why they have so many different types. Well, this one is about oil spill, just a lone fisherman. When I did this, I was very upset because of the, the oil spill in the environment and a lot of people went out to the shore to try to help and rescue some of the animals that were affected. And so I created a piece about that. Uh, when we were talking about there was a lot of deportation and immigration, I created a piece about that. Like I said before, an artist cannot see a blank canvas. So I put it on my face and I traced my face. I created it at the time where COVID just started. So I did my face about COVID. I do allow the emotion to help me create some pieces sometimes, yeah. This was at the very beginning when, you know, we hadn't had so many casualties about this. The mass is the world, so now it's just a different meaning. The one thing about art therapy, it helps you focus on that, what you're working on. So you're not dwelling on different things that are happening. This is an old style Mexican ranch style home, which I would love to have. And I really had fun working with that particular piece because of the, the size and trying to create that illusion. At that time, I have lost my home. And so I guess I was trying to imagine that particular house, how I would love to be there. That is more of a personal little piece, yeah. A couple of years back, there was an activity or like a cultural festival in, in, in Texas. And I saw this young girl, she was beautiful. And so that kind of gave me the idea to create her. That is a combination of totally everything and that is recycled. We have yarn, uh, we have material, we have paper. The flowers on her head are made out of recycled paper that I make into a pub and then I put color to it and, and molded it into the flowers. I let people touch it because it's a lot of different texture and that's what I love about that painting. Sometimes the idea is, although emotion is so great that I want to create this piece that I can work on it for days and days and days. Every day I have to keep on working and I don't stop. But then there are other ones that if I'm 
Somebody says, okay, can you create this? It takes me a minute because I have to, it didn't come from me and I'm creating somebody else's idea. So maybe that'll take me a lot longer. Sometimes it's a, a blank idea and then I come up with it or sometimes I will draw or paint an idea that I have and then I create it to the 3D form. This is coffee time. So this took about a week, you know, first of course we do the image first on pencil. Because most of the medium that's used here is only paper, pulp, and then materials. Her face, her body, that's made out of cloth. And then the rest, the hair and the birds, and all the stuff you see around, it's mostly the paper. A lot of people love this one as well. This is La Playa, which is, means the beach in Spanish. That was strictly random, and so I started looking at the material to see what I had. The t-shirts that I like, I cut the pieces out that I want into very small pieces, and then I start placing it like a puzzle. The smaller you, you cut the pieces, the better the detail you'll have. The new one that I'm going to do is called Cuban Cigar. I am trying to create some more of uh, cultural pieces for the Hispanic Heritage Month in October. It's funny, the, a lot of the Cuban cigars are made in Dominican Republic, but they're labeled Cuban, right? And so, for some reason, the ladies, they always show a lady trying to smoke. A lot of people kind of refer to, you know, the Cuban cigar with a lady smoking. So I wanted to create her. I'm not a smoker, I don't promote smoking but mostly it was for the cultural, just for identify that in Cuba. An ideal for any artist, I think, is to be able to be recognized. So when you go somewhere and you see that piece somewhere hanging that you can say, hey, I know, that's Eva. I go by Eva in my art and my books. It's because of Valdez. Valdez is my maiden name. And I hope to use my art uh, pieces for donation so that I can help some of the causes that I, I promote. I hope that I can be recognized someday as my pieces. My whole focus is just not art. Uh, in that form, I have many other forms that I do. But my latest creation is I am a children's author, and I illustrated my art in, in that. It's bilingual, and that's the, the neat thing about my books, that they're bilingual. So with the Isabel, uh, it's a series of books. I have uh, uh, two more on their way. My plan last year was to do 10, so I'm halfway there, and um, this is the first published one. Somebody shared my stories as a child growing up in the Caribbean, and my first book is about Isabel travels to America. It's an actual story about when I first came to the United States. One of the things that happened that I'll share with you is that I used to think that America was so wealthy, right? And the extension of the wealth extended all the way that they sent this airplane to pick me up. Dominican Republic to New York City. And so the person that was escorting me um, said, oh, well, gotta use the bathroom before we take off. And so I went out. I saw the aisle and I was so impressed by everything. And when I went to the bathroom on top of the vanity, they had a whole bunch of different color bottles. They had red and pink and purple and all of that. And I thought, as a child, that wow, America is so rich, it got perfumes for everybody that you wear. And I couldn't, sell, I couldn't pick one that I liked the best. So when I was in the bathroom, I went ahead and put it all over me. They knocked on the door to tell me to get out, that I need to go sit down. And uh, when I was walking down the aisle, everybody was like turning their heads because what I actually was putting on was the fragrances for the bathroom. It was not perfume. Anyway, by the time I got to my seat, I probably passed out from all the different fragrances. <laughs> Once you get to read it, you will really love my story. It's very childlike. So my second collaborate is a collaboration book with Seven Paths, One Destination, and it's a group of ladies from Clarksville 
We are all different uh, stages in our lives, different careers, you know, different paths. And so we all talk about our, how do we got from here to there. And uh, it's a very good like helper book for a lot of people that are trying to establish a business and also the struggles that they went through and you know, how to accomplish that. And I work with a nonprofit, so I talked about the struggles of a nonprofit and, and the things that I was going through to get to where I'm at today. I like what I'm doing and I, I always like to venture into new materials and see what comes out of. So I'm one of those um, exploratory kind of person that I love to explore new materials and see how pliable it is to work with and how to form it. So I'm always, always looking for new things. Some people say, well, I don't know how to draw. Then maybe take pictures or maybe saw and knit or something. Uh, I, I think it's very healthy to get in, in some kind of form of relaxation. Stress is very high in people. Uh, suicide is very high. These things, art or music, you know, is, is very, I think is needed in the community, is needed in society. People need to find the outlet. With my children, I always promoted um, art, you know, or uh, music. They did not much care about music, playing an instrument, but they did, both of them enjoy art because I think a lot of kids, they need that outlet. Like it doesn't matter what's happening around you sometimes, they need to be able to go into their whatever it is, you know? And I think that's why video games is so consuming or important for kids because they just focus totally on it. And so um, you don't want your kid on TV all day long watching, you know, you want them to be creative. So find a way to help them get creative. So I'm a life coach and I believe that if nothing's happening in your life, you're not living it. You know, you meant to do that experience thing, so that's how you grow. You know, you, you might be here today and if you're not out there trying to reinvent yourself, create something, experience life, you're going to be stagnated. You're not going to grow as a person. I just believe that and that's why I have many hats. Because I'm always, you know, doing something, experience something. There is a movie about the yes man, you know, and his life changed because he was able to say yes, because fear is only up here. We have to take that step and say, yes, I'm going to try that. And you say, well, okay, well, maybe that's not for me, but that was a great experience. I grew from that. And then you keep on going. When we were in, uh, in the school, that's in my book as well, the little kids were all saying their version of what they thought what America was. You hear good things or you hear bad things, but little kid thinks America is such a place of wealth, like just a mine of gold, you know. In my book, I talk about how we were looking for the street of golds, like they had golden streets and, you know, kind of like when you think about going to heaven. <laughs> and so kids think that, you know, when you come here, that this is a magical place. And of course, you know, you, you come from a third world country where education is, is, is not a, a given, you know. You, you gotta buy your books if you're gonna go to school. You, you can't really buy uniforms or, you know, food is rare, you know. When I was little, I was a vegetarian because you have like one, one chicken to feed like 18 people in a family, right? By the time you got to the kids, there was no meat left. You didn't miss it because you never ate it. A lot of people live in community setting, like, you know, like extended families, you know, and all because that's just to be able to survive, right? And so if you have one chicken to feed like a family of 12 or 18 people, there's an order to that. The people that are out there working, they might get the breast or half of the breast, you know, and it goes down to, okay, you get the leg and you get the, the, the breast, you know, you get the, the wing kind of goes down like that. The, they try to feed the people that are out there contributing to the family. So if you're not contributing, you probably won't get part of the chicken. 
And so I think that's what it was with the kids. You know, we were just there, make sure that we ate, you know, but they made sure that the people that are out there working and bringing sustenance to the family, you know, supporting the family that they were well taken care of. It's just a lot of stuff that kids here take for granted, you know, the, having a TV, having video game, having electricity, you know. And so um, I, I think that giving back to the community helps, you know, so they can see that there's a lot of need. We have a lot of need in America as well. One way that we can teach that, since we can't just go travel to another country to experience this, is to get out there in the community and, and do community service and they could see, you know, wow, you know, we got people here in America going through struggles. And if they can see that they can learn you know, compassion, they can learn to give back. You know, you have to take into account that for a lot of immigrants, some of them, they, they come out to the United States only like the father or the mother to venture out because eventually they hope that they can send money back to help support the rest of the family or, you know, eventually that they can come as well, you know, and so one, brave so soldier, right? One brave member of the family has to take that step. And a lot of times they don't get to go back or they don't get to go see their family or a lot of things happen during that course. So I've met a lot of people who like their family died or their mom died and they were so upset because they could not go, go back to see them because they're out here for the American dream, you know, to try to get that American dream. For current and exclusive content, subscribe to CDE Lightband, connecting you at the speed of light.